Hello students. Hello and welcome to the new lecture session. I am Shankar Ghosh, Assistant Professor of Automobile Engineering Department at Dr. Sudhir Chandra Shud Degree Engineering College under the GIS group. Today, we will discuss on the subject of modern vehicle technology. This is the <clears throat> seventh semester automobile engineering students subject. Today, we will discuss on a new topic that is active suspension system. This is the topic of module number two, which is suspension brakes and safety. Students, in this active suspension system, here we will learn about the active system, suspension systems, and we will discuss types of active suspension system means semi-active suspension systems and <coughs> sorry, and fully active suspension system. Beside the active suspension system, we will also discuss the passive suspension system, its working principle and its advantages and disadvantages. And we also know the knowing the different types of vehicles where we use this type by this kinds of suspension system. From this topics students you will you will learn about you will know about the active suspension systems its working principle its history its type and you also learn about the uh, its various types of active suspension systems so students let's start the class An active suspension system is a type of automotive suspension system on a vehicle. It uses onboard system to control. It uses onboard system to control the vertical movement of the vehicles feels relative to the chassis or vehicle body rather than the passive suspension provided by large spring where the movement is determined entirely by the road surface. So called active suspensions are divided into basically two classes real active suspension or fully active suspension and adaptive or semi active suspension. While adaptive suspension only vary shock absorber firmness to match changing road or the dynamic conditions where active suspension use where the active suspension use some type of actuator to rise and lower the chassis independently chassis independently at each wheel. These technologies, these technologies allow car manufacturers to achieve a greater 
डिग्री ऑफ राइट क्वालिटी ए ग्रेटर डिग्री ऑफ राइट क्वालिटी एंड कार हैंडलिंग एंड कार हैंडलिंग बाई कीपिंग द टायर्स पेंडिकुलर टू द रोड इन कॉर्नर्स अलाउिंग बेटर ट्रैक्शन अलाउिंग बेटर ट्रैक्शन एंड कंट्रोल एंड ऑन बोर्ड कंप्यूटर डिटेक्ट्स बॉडी मूवमेंट्स फ्रॉम सेंसर्स थ्रू आउट द व्हीकल एंड using the data controls the action of the active and the semi active suspensions the system virtually eliminates body roll and pitch variation in many driving situations including the cornering accelerating and braking so students the active suspension the first to introduce two separate actuators which can exert an in independent force on the suspension to improve the riding characteristics the drawbacks of this design are high cost high cost added complication and mass of the apparatus and the need for frequent and the need for the frequent maintenance on some implementation maintenance can require for the specialized tools so is for required for the specialized tools and some problems which can be difficult to diagnosis so students these are the basics of the active suspension system next one is history one of the earliest air suspension was built in the year of 1800s it was made of made up of goat skin bags with the flap of valve the valve would let air into the bag when vehicle bounced in one direction and trap here in the bag with the axle try to move in the opposite direction this action provided a supply of air to the bag when the vehicle bounced bounced up and bounce up and cushion the impact cushion the impact of the bump when the vehicle come back down that application that application was for rail train passengers car even then air was recognized when the air air was recognized as firstly improving 
right quality for vehicles, passengers, and the cargo. Until the early of 70s, until the early of 70s, the suspension was generally only applied to the special vehicle requiring extra care for the cargo. The cost, the cost and the maintenance requirements restricted to restricted the use of air suspensions for the many years. During the 70s and 80s, technology and the understanding of air suspensions improved greatly. From then until now, uses of this air suspension was increased on class 8 on class 8 tracks and tailored to about 85% and 65% respectively. The use of air on the passengers automobile and on of highway sports vehicle was also increased dramatically during this time of period. Although the cost of an air suspension is still higher than steel or rubber suspension, the value of the suspension, air suspension is recognized to provide an excellent return on the investment. These values come in the form of longer trailer life, decreased damage to equipment and the cargo and improve the right condition. <coughs> so students, these are the history of these suspension systems. Next one is types of the suspension systems. Where the suspension system is divided into three types. Number one, is passive suspension and the number two is active suspension where the active is divided into two portion that is semi active suspension and the fully active suspension that is why suspension systems are three types one is passive suspension passive suspension second one is semi active suspension and third one is fully active suspension now let's start with the passive suspension conventional suspension system is also known as this passive suspension system the conventional suspension system is also known as a passive suspension system which is consisting of spring and damper mounted at each wheel of the vehicle in parallel. The function of spring in vehicle suspension, the function of spring in the vehicle suspension is to support the vehicle body, is to support the vehicle body and at the same time it is used and at the same time it is used 
to absorb and store the energy absorb and store the energy the damper or the shock absorber is a component of the vehicle suspension used to dissipate the vibration energy used to dissipate the vibration energy which is stored in the spring and control the input from the road that is transmitted to the vehicle other purpose of suspension system are to isolate sprung mass sprung mass from the unsprung mass vibration the to provide directional stability during the cornering and to an over and provide and provide damping and provide damping for the high frequency vibration induced in the fire excitations as we can say if this is the surface of the road if we use this is a wheel which is connected with this spring coefficient of tire with the unsprung mass and this unsprung to sprung mass is connected to the spring and the damper the spring which is helps the passenger in a stable condition and the damper is used to dissipate the vibration energy in the spring and control the can control the damping of the vehicle so so this passive or the conventional suspension system or the various type that is leaf spring torsion beam air spring coil spring here this is a picture which is known as this leaf spring this leaf spring we can easily shown you can see in, in the truck trailer the rear portion of the truck trailer this is a helps to absorb the damper this is a torsion beam this is also a another another types of the passive suspension system now come to the air spring and this is the coil spring the air spring and coil spring these are helps to control the helps to control the damping of the vehicle on the various in the bad road surface so so this is the passive suspension system next one is semi active components is a semi active suspension system the semi active suspension system is quite similar with the conventional suspension system the semi active suspension system is quite con it similar with the conventional suspension system 
this kind of suspension has a spring and controllable damper in which the spring element is used to store the energy meanwhile the controllable damper meanwhile the controllable damper is used to dissipate the energy so spring is used to store the energy and damper is used to dissipate the energy some of the semi active suspension systems some of the semi <coughs> active suspension systems use the passive damper and the controllable spring the controllable damper usually acts with limited capability to produce a control force control <coughs> force when dissipating the energy when while in active suspension the components of spring or the damper are replaced with an actuator the an, an actuator is controlled by using the feedback from the vehicle body so students from this picture this is the road surface this is the tire this is the spring so controllable damper so due to the uneven or bad road surface when the vehicle does are not is jumps that time spring is used to store the energy and the controllable damper and the controllable damper is used to dissipate the energy so in this way the semi active suspension is worked technically active suspension system is used to control the movement is used to control the movement of a vehicle using the on board controller by controlling the tire movement by controlling the tire movement during cornering braking and also accelerating the method the method of the controller for active suspension can be divided four based four type based upon the control techniques namely solenoid actuators hydraulic actuators electromagnetic recuperator recuperator and magneto rheological damper for the semi active for the semi active with controllable damper it act like an actuator with but with limited capability so students here the semi active suspension system which is where controllable damper is used the controllable damper acts like a like an actuator within limited capability 
to is produce a controlled force is produced a controlled force when dissipating the energy and when supplying energy it switches to a national zero damping state national zero damping state the advantage of the advantage of semi active system is the cost of operational is less than the other type of advanced suspension system the advantage of the semi active suspension is the cost of operational which is less than the other type of advanced suspension system so student here you can see a picture of a four wheeler and a picture of a two wheeler the four wheeler is toyota supra model which is launched in the year of 2018 and the two wheeler is ducati multi strada 950 or 950 s which is launched in 2020 so in this case semi active suspension is used so students the semi active suspension is a type of automotive suspension system that control the damping force of the shock absorber in response to input from the continuous varying road surfaces it is intended to approximately it is intended to approximately implemented the active suspension with a damping force adjustable shock absorber the semi active suspension may be implemented by the several types of control methodology a generally known typical technology is sky hook control in the sky hook control model an imaginary damper hung from an aerial height with its end fixed there is implemented by generating a force of the sprung speed multiplied by the damping coefficient a passive damper which is installed in parallel with this sky hook damper and provides a force equivalent to the soft damping force of the damping force adjustable shock absorber when the damper model is given a random an input from the road surface the relation between the required combined damping force by the sky hook and the passive damper the relative speed between the sprung and unsprung component the required damping force appear in all of the first two fourth coordinate so the damping force so that the damping force of the shock absorber is to resistance force against the contraction even the damping force adjustable 
shock absorber can only deliver the damping forces in the first and the third quadrants in other word to achieve the required damping force in this second and the fifth quadrants negative damping force must be generated however this is totally impossible therefore in the coordinate plan of piston speed and the sprung speed the damping force is controlled to the required level for the first and the third quadrant and controlled to the minimum level for the second and the fourth quadrant so so then this is the semi active suspension system next one is fully active suspension system fully active suspension has the ability to respond to the vertical changes in the road input the damper or spring is interceding by the force actuator this force actuator has its own task which is to add or dissipate the energy from the system the force actuator is controlled by various types of controller determined by the designer the correct control the correct control strategy will give better compromise between comfort and the vehicle stability therefore the active suspension system therefore the active suspension system offers better riding and vehicle handling to the passenger in these types of suspension the controller can modify the system dynamics by activating the actuators the picture you can see this is the bed load surface this is the wheel this is the spring actuator and damper this is the sprung mass and the unsprung mass when the vehicle dumps jumps spring is used to store the energy and variable damper is used to dissipate the energy an actuator helps to control this whole thing so this is this the active suspension so here student you can see the picture of a four wheeler and the picture of a two wheeler the four wheeler is audi a8 model which is launched in 2020 and 
the two wheeler is the suzuki hayabusa which is launched in this this model is launched in 2019 this vehicles or uh, in this vehicles fully active suspension system fully active suspension system is used as a vehicle suspension systems after discuss the various types of suspension means active or fully active suspension system semi active suspension system and the passive suspension system now it's time to comparison the comp comparison of these three types of suspension system <clears throat> where active or fully active the advantages of active systems or active means or fully active suspension is it is extensive range of forces this is compatible with an any force and the velocity it is gaining better performance and it has more efficiency on then the comes to the advantages of the active suspension or fully active suspension is that it is more power is needed it has it is it has higher weight to power ratio ratio it has a higher price it is considerable modification should be done before setting it into the existing vehicle now let's discuss about the advantages of the semi active suspension it is less implementation cost lower energy uses simple control simple design and easy to set up and what are the disadvantages disadvantages are damper limitation narrow efficiency range better performance than passive system but performance is not good as the active suspension system means fully active suspension system now comes to the passive suspension the advantage of passive suspension is that it is simple design and same configuration lower price in comparison with the other kind of suspension system now comes to the disadvantage of passive the performance is not good as active or the fully active and the semi active suspension so student so these are the these are this this is the comparison of the active sus active or fully active suspension system semi active suspension system suspension system and the passive suspension system yeah we can so 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 students today we will we discuss discuss active suspension i think told the start the earlier of this lecture here we can learn various things on from there so students so we you can do then now you are able to understand the active suspension system its type its history its working nature its uh, its various types and they are using various methods and the comparison of these the suspension system so thank you
for your listening on the next class we will discuss another new topic so still now so still then stay at home and stay safe thank you thank you so much